evening to you all. I'm extremely delighted, Andrea, I see you, <laughs> to join you this evening. And uh, Diana, I'm a bit surprised you didn't mention Eskazu, because in fact, I believe this public consultation falls very squarely within the ambit of our obligations under the Eskazu Agreement, which is principle 10 of Rio in terms of access to information, public sharing of information with respect to environmental uh, issues. And therefore, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is extremely pleased to collaborate with the university and other partners in participating uh, this evening. I wanted to take a bit of a different tack from our, our other colleagues and to treat with what you've um, mentioned, moderator, more the diplomatic side of it the, uh, in, in terms of what does ratification of the Kigali Amendment really mean for us as Guyana, both in term, as, as an opportunity. And in order to do so, I think it is important for us to have a good understanding, and um, it has been alluded to variously by the previous speakers, what has made the Montreal Protocol so successful and then what specific opportunities it represents for us. And uh, Mr. Hamer, I'm certainly going to come back to 1.5 to stay alive because that was a negotiating mantra. Before getting into that, let me say that the Chinese have a very famous saying. They say, if you want to walk fast or you want to, you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, you should go together. And I trust that through our consultation this evening that we'll be of one mind in terms of the importance of Guyana's ratification of the Kigali Amendment. Well, uh, the Montreal Protocol. I believe there are three or four reasons why it has been so successful. Foremost among those is that more than any other multilateral environmental agreement, it has incorporated the differentiated responsibilities in that uh, you have different uh, countries at different scales, different um, levels of usage, different contributions in terms of the problem. And therefore, in its solution, the Montreal Protocol has managed to effect common but differentiated responsibilities. So we don't all have to contribute to the solution in the same way, but to the extent that we are able or, we, uh, or circumstances allow. So therefore, and I think mention was made of the different uh, articles, countries that, on, on different articles. We are Article 5, meaning that we are very minimal or insignificant contributor in terms of HFCs and so on. So our scale of responsibility is very different. So unlike even the, uh, the Paris Agreement, which incorporated it somewhat. The Montreal Protocol managed to really solidify common but differentiated responsibility. Another um, aspect of importance is certainly the universality of the Montreal Protocol. Uh, the Montreal Protocol is, in fact, the first, and I uh, would stand to be corrected, but I think still the only multilateral agreement that is universally subscribed. Every member state of the UN has uh, ratified the Montreal Protocol. So with that level of union, in fact, Kofi Annan has referred to the Montreal Protocol as the most successful international agreement ever because of the level of um, the universal sub subscription in terms of ratifications. And therefore, that kind of universal embrace has given it um, significant cloud. Thirdly, I would say the provisions for means of implementation, which very often is the bugbear, the uh, well, the Achilles heel of implementation at a global level. You do not have sufficient resources, you do not have sufficient capacity, technology, uh, transfer, and certainly other, other dimensions. But with the multilateral fund, the Montreal Protocol built in support for member countries being able to achieve their responsibilities, and that is critical, really, really unique in the world of multilateral environmental agreements. 
And I would say finally, in terms of the success of the Montreal Protocol, would be that it has been eminently successful. It has, in fact, achieved, um, and uh, I think um, Sheiko referred to it um, in her presentation, it has achieved in terms of the recovery of the ozone layer that had been damaged. And the, um, those signs of recovery are already evident. And we have a date by which full recovery is expected. So taken together, the Montreal Protocol is in a very, very unique place. And in fact, we would be somewhat outside of the main and outside of expectations if we did not ratify the Kigali Amendment. And therefore, I have explored what are the essential success factors of Montreal Protocol as a basis for showing that, in fact, it represents the, the ratification of the Kigali Amendment represents for us a wonderful opportunity to be in sync with the international community. Beyond that, um, of course, a, a, a very big part of the intention of the um, finalization of the Kigali Amendment was in fact to contribute to the implement implementation of the Paris Agreement. And as you know, we are struggling to um, achieve uh, two degrees, much less 1.5, which is the SIDS or EOSIS conception. And we've had, of course, the backing of the IPCC special report in terms of um, the 1.5 scenarios, and we've championed, we've championed that. So in fact, um, amendment of the Kigali Amendment gives us a powerful tool in terms of helping to move towards the full implementation realization of the scenarios of the objectives of the Paris Agreement. Further, it provides us with, I believe, significant moral leadership in our fight in terms of combating anthropogenic climate change. And therefore, it seems that we should be champions, really, and we should be moving in a hurry towards the uh, ratification of the Kigali Amendment. I wanted to say, probably in that respect, not that we would be unmindful of the possible implications, but as you've heard both from the Minister of Agriculture and other colleagues, that in fact it has not been unduly burdensome for us, and we've made good progress um, in relation to other aspects. So it would um, seem logical that we would proceed with um, all things considered with the ratification of the Kigali Amendment. What is the process for ratification? Well, it follows um, the path of all other um, international agreements to which we are uh, signatories, in that there would be consideration of the you know, um, pros and cons. The technical agencies would provide their evaluations, and then those technical agencies, in collaboration with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, would present to the cabinet a uh, paper documenting what are the, the, the necessary undertakings. And I think we've heard that outlined in terms of what we'd have to do, what support would be required to do so. And fortunately, in this instance, there's already a built-in mechanism under Montreal to provide very significant um, support for countries in implementation. And thereafter, it would be for the cabinet to make determination in terms of signature. And um, thereafter, we would uh, lodge or make the ratification, the instrument of ratification, lodge that with the Secretariat. And that would, um, in essence, place us in the ranks of those that have, uh, have ratified. So I believe the case is extremely strong for us to, and uh, I, I'm not going to go to my notes, which I'm going to ignore. <laughs> extremely strong for us to, to ratify. I think it's, uh, the, the moment is opportune to be among the leaders. I think the preparation is um, well advanced on, on account of the fact that we've already been implementing other amendments, other aspects of the Montreal Protocol. So we have um, basically the know-how in doing so. And I think it contributes to, and this will be my final point, really the efficacy of multilateralism, and you know for Guyana, multilateralism is very much our lifeblood. And multilateralism is a force multiplier 
for small states and therefore in terms of making an impact at the international level we tend to err on the side of strongly supporting multilateral approaches so with that ladies and gentlemen i want to thank you i'd be happy to answer any related questions but really to end again with a strong call for us to explore fully the benefits of ratification and to proceed um, at the appropriate time in doing so thank you very much